You're watching KCMI TV. Well, thank you for joining me today. And, uh, you know, and I would say this for myself, and I'm sure it applies with all of you. Uh, battling the enemy and not having success can really uh, bring discouragement. You know, when you feel like that you're adhering to what the word challenges us to do and, you know, you come against the devil and for divine healing or, or, or other things and you don't seem to have that breakthrough, if you're not careful, you can really get discouraged and discouragement will make you stop doing things. So <clears throat> I wanted to uh, read you several verses today and then we're going to break it down. This is out of the book of James chapter 4 <clears throat> and we're going to start with verse 6. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but he giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep and let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift thee up. Uh, <clears throat> so the other day I was just in prayer and this really began to, to move in my spirit because <clears throat> I'm, I'm really dealing with something uh, uh, in my health, it's not bad, but I just it's just like one of those little foxes that nags at you. And I believe in the word of the Lord. And so this the verse came up to me, uh, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from me. So there's really three key words in James chapter 4 and verse 7. One is submit, one is resist, and the third one is flee. So in verse 7, he begins to start out here. He says, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from thee. A lot of times we don't quote the entirety of this scripture. We'll, we'll you know, declare, if you'll just resist the devil, he will flee from you. But not if you don't do the first part. And so, uh, you know, we all feel like that we're resisting the devil. And you think, well, I'm resisting the enemy, Lord. Uh, why is he not running? Why is he not fleeing? Why is he not withdrawing? And so the key in resisting is not just the act of resisting, but it's the fact that is there authority involved when you speak to the devil? And so James starts out here, he says, before you resist the devil, he said, you got to submit yourself unto God. And so we go now to submitting, uh, and that literally means, uh, you can actually use the word uh, submission. It, it literally means coming under the mission of someone else, not your own, but theirs, and submitting to the Lord. And so for a lot of people, it's very difficult to submit. You know, pride gets in the way and whatnot. But James here begins to speak. He said, the only way that you will ever be able to resist the devil is if you first submit to God. And when you submit to God, you come underneath God, then God becomes responsible for you. Because submitting means that you are acquiescing to the Lord, you're walking in obedience, you are laying down your own will, and you're adopting the will of the Lord. So when you come into that vein with the Lord, and you say, Father, I'm yielding to you, I'm, com I'm committing myself to you, you are now submitting to the Lord. What comes out of that is the authority that Jesus Christ has, he now gives you. So all of the authority that Christ has over Satan, you get when you submit to the Lord. 
and authority is a powerful thing. And you remember the story of the centurion. There are, there are two times <clears throat> in the Bible it says that, that God marveled. And one was that faith. In the centurion, the Bible said he marveled at the centurion's faith. The other one was he marveled at the unbelief. And faith and unbelief both make God marvel. So the centurion comes, he says, Lord, I'm not even worthy that you would come under my roof. He said, uh, you just speak the word and I know it'll be done. He said, because I understand authority. He said, because I am under authority. Now, this is really key. He says, I'm under authority. And he says, because I'm under authority, he says, I can say go and they go or do this and they do this. He said, because I'm under authority, then I have the right to speak with authority and it happens. And so when you come under the authority of Jesus Christ, you now get his authority. This opens up a whole new dimension now because you are transitioning from, in this verse, from submitting to God to now he says, go ahead and resist the devil. That literally means that you can look at the enemy and tell him, you're going to do this, and the devil has to do it. Um, when he says here, resist the devil, if you go back to the preceding verse, in verse 6 of James, it says, God resisteth the proud. In the verse 7, he says, you resist the devil. And in, in verse 7, it says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace unto the humble. There are several verses that teach this principle. And I read to you the last verse, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up or he shall exalt thee. There are several verses that talk about this. You know, lots of Christians want honor. Lots of people that are in leadership want honor. But the Bible is very clear about this. It says, humility comes before honor. And verse 6, the Lord resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. In other words, God when you come before the Lord in humility, because you can't submit to God without humility. You are acquiescing to the will of the Lord. And so God resists the proud. He will not release his authority to proud people, but he gives grace to the humble. Those of us who come to the Lord in obedience and humility, then the Lord begins to bring honor. And verse 10, it says, not only uh, does he bless the humble, but he will lift you up. So now we're in this dimension to where because we have authority, we can look at the devil and whatever he's doing to us, we tell him, we're not doing that. I'm not accepting that. Uh, I've had, as many of you have had, you know, you're dealing with something in your life. It, it can be a sickness or whatever. And we believe in divine healing. But it only works as if we have authority because the devil doesn't respond to anything but authority. And authority that only comes from Jesus Christ. And when you are resisting the enemy, the Bible says when you resist the devil and you have the authority of Jesus Christ, the Bible does not say maybe or sometimes the devil will flee. It says he will flee every time. You go back to the um, scriptures where it talks about it said that, that the devil was contending, Satan was contending with Michael the archangel over the body of Moses. And it could have been that the devil did not want Moses to show up on the Mount of Transfiguration thousands of years later. And as great as Michael is, and we know that he's a warring angel, when the devil came against him and began to contend with him, the Bible didn't say that Michael went after the devil as his own strength. And what he did, the Bible says the, that Michael looked at the devil and he said, the Lord rebuke with you. When you are submitted to God and then under that authority that God has given you, you begin to resist the devil. It's no longer you speaking. 
but it's the mystery of the ages. It's Christ in us. So all of these verses are just intrinsically linked together. So when you get now, you get down to verse 8. Remember now, the Lord is talking about he resists the proud. And then verse 7, he says, you will resist the devil and he will flee from you. Departure will take place. Now you get into verse 8 and it says, if you will draw nigh to God. Remember now, the devil is going to flee from you. It says, if you will draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to to you. And so it doesn't say God will draw nigh to you and then you'll draw nigh to God. Initially he did that while we were yet sinners, Christ loved us. But if you want to be close to the Lord, you have to make that initial effort that as you begin to draw nigh to the Lord, he begins to draw nigh to you. A beautiful example of this is the parable of the prodigal son. The father's heart yearned for his boy. He remembered the times of that boy being raised in the house and with joy he would look at him and now the boy is gone and the father believes that he's going to come back and so he would stand at the edge of the home and look down the road. He never went to get his boy. But when the prodigal son came to himself, he said, I'm going home. What did he do? He began to draw nigh. Every step that he took got him closer to the father. And as he drew nigh home, the father looks up and he sees the son. And then the father drew nigh unto the son and they embraced each other and wept. God wants us to be close to him, but it requires us to have an effort on our part. And so um, how, other than having the authority of the Lord, how do you get the authority and how do you resist the devil? And so you, you go back um, to the first verse. It says, God resisted the proud. When we come into the presence of God without the spirit of humility, God resists that. He won't respond to it. He will not draw nigh to it. And so you get down to verse 8, uh, verse, and he says, uh, draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to you. In the last part of this, he says, purify your hearts, ye double-minded. And the reason, uh, you know, first he deals with sinners and then he talks to us. He says, you need to purify your hearts. He says, because you're double-minded. And we know that out of the issues of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so how, how do you purify your heart? Because as human beings, all of us, uh, we really have to watch it because if we're not careful, you know, we'll be, really be speaking authority and life and faith. And then when we don't see the answer right away, all of a sudden we let the enemy trick us and we begin to speak the other side of the coin. It's almost like we come into agreement. I, I remember reading a wonderful book uh, by Reinhard Monke, and he made the statement. He said, why is it so easy to doubt the words of Christ? but so easy to believe everything the devil says. He says, why don't we doubt the devil instead of doubting the word of the Lord? And so the Lord begins to speak here, and he said, you need to purify your hearts. So we go back now to you. Well, how, how do we purify our hearts? And he says this in the next verse. He says, you need to be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness and humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. Um, what he's saying is, and there's another verse that talks about this, that we need to be sober. And the way that you purify your heart, it's, our hearts just smite us when unbelief comes out of our mouth all the time. 
And he said, the way that you purify your heart is you come before the Lord. And all of these sayings that he's talking about here, uh, afflicted, mourn, weep, mourning, all of these really are just different um, descriptive terms for repentance. That we're coming before the Lord in repentance and we're repenting of unbelief. And that the moment that your heart becomes pure, then life begins to come out of that heart so that when you begin to go after the devil and whatever right now is attacking you in your home, in your life, it can be so many different things. Whatever it is, if you are a child of God, the enemy has no legal right to be there. When it comes to healing, uh, when I pray for people that need healing or I pray for myself when I need, need to be um, delivered from some kind of sickness, I'm not praying, God, will you heal me? I've already been healed. By his stripes, we were healed. So I already know that my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and I am healed. You say, well, then why do you feel the way you feel? Because the devil will trespass illegally. He will, he will move into you illegally to see if you have the authority to make him leap. This is where it comes back to you have to resist the devil. The reason most Christians never achieve victory when they resist the devil is they don't have any authority. And the whole key to having authority is submitting. It is yielding. It's coming underneath something. And lots of believers, you know, as it's in our human nature, we don't want anybody telling us what to do. Well, if you want to tell the devil what to do, you're going to have to let Jesus tell you what to do. And the moment that you submit to the Lord. This is why the Bible says God resists the proud. He says, I'll resist the proud. He said, you resist the devil. And what we're trying to achieve in our life, in our walk with God, is not to have, this, have a spirit of pride in us. That's the original sin. That's what caused Satan to fall from heaven. And and be moved out of, out of the kingdom of the Lord was the spirit of pride. The key, and listen, this works for anybody. This idea of, well, you have to be a pastor or a preacher or operate in, in the five-fold ministry, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, apostle, all of those. Not true. This verse, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Why will he flee? Because the devil doesn't want to come under your authority. So he will run from you. That's one of the meanings of this in the original language is the devil will run from you. He will try to escape because he does not want to bow down to the authority of Jesus Christ. When he leaves, the little demons that were doing his bidding that are in your life whatever's harassing you has to go with him. So when the devil flees, it's at that moment that you shift into great victory because the authority of the Lord is in your life. And everything, this body, Paul said this, he said, I bring my body under subjection lest preaching to others I myself become a castaway. Learn how to bring self under control. Learn how to bring the old man into the cross and submit to the Lord Jesus Christ. When you submit to Christ, automatically, Jesus backs up. That's, not, that's what the scripture says. Whatever you bind, I'll bind. Whatever you loose, I'll loose. That scripture only applies to people that are submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ. If we are not submitted to Christ, we can bind the devil all day long. The devil's going to look at us and laugh. Listen, when you 
resist the devil and you're submitted to Jesus Christ and you tell the enemy you are going to leave, he's not leaving because of you. He's leaving because of who's backing you up. The devil is not afraid of you, but he's afraid of the Christ that's in you. And as long as you have Christ in your spirit and as long as you are submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ and you have that spirit of humility, then you have authority over the devil. There is nothing that the enemy can do to you that you cannot tell him, stop it. And the enemy has to stop it. And you walk in great victory. So I would just end with this. You don't have to walk in frustration. We don't have to command the enemy and not see any kind of victory. This verse applies to every single instance, every single dilemma that you would encounter. God will give you the victory. And thanks be unto God who causes us always to triumph through Jesus Christ. Hope this has helped you today. Um, go back and read this, this James chapter 4 verses uh, 6 through 10 right in there and just see how they link up with each other. And he, God gives us keys here. These are keys that if you will apply them to your life, you won't have to go to somebody else and say, would you pray for me? I'm just, I'm overwhelmed. You have the belt and you have the ability. You resist the devil and watch him run from you. God bless you. I love you. Uh, I'll see you next week. Until then, you be strong in the Lord and may God's face shine upon you. For more information about Kent Christmas Ministries International or Regeneration Nashville, go to kentchristmas.org or regenerationnashville.org. And for the latest updates or videos, follow us on Facebook and subscribe to us on YouTube. God bless you.